Hello and welcome to my session on Dapper and .NET Aspire, a new era for observability. I'm excited to be part of this um, event um, and you know, and let's get started. So um, my name is Harry Kimpel um, and I work in developer relations at Neuralic. Um, I have been writing code throughout my entire professional career, mostly very closely related to the Microsoft developer ecosystem. I am a big fan of outdoor activities that I very much enjoy in this beautiful area in Southern Germany, as you can tell from my accent as well, I guess. So, and when I'm not in front of a computer, I'm also the chief repair officer at home. <laughs> and I get to why this is important in a second. Um, but yeah, I, that is one of my tasks. So first of all, um, I would like to congratulate to Dapper on five years already. Um, this is amazing. I still very well remember the Microsoft Ignite conference in Orlando in 2019. Mark introduced this new concept on stage and I was blown away, to be honest. Um, why? Because if you have been in the industry for some time, um, you may have noticed that some of the topics that Dapper solves are really quite challenging when you have to deal with them yourself in your various environments. Um, so things like service-to-service -service invocations, um, accessing state stores, and not to forget securing your applications and environments. And it also solves another key aspect that is also near and dear to my heart, um, and that is observability. I have been with the Relic now for more than seven years, and it still amazes me um, that so many developers and organizations take monitoring and observability as a second thought. So it is such a key area, and even more today with all the microservices and the changes in how we build software. If you want to iterate fast and you want to know what is going on in your systems and how your systems are behaving, um, you want to measure it and use these insights to improve your software, you have to have um, observability in place. And this could be from a performance, error handling, or simply from a pure you know, user experience perspective. So all of these aspects are so important. And I love the fact that you know, Dapper and also .NET Aspire um, approaches this um, in first hand. So, but the world of observability is changing and for good, uh, just to make sure. <laughs> so let's have a look at an analogy um, that you know, I um, you know, came up with. So if you look at this icon here, um, you can consider this a specification for, for example, for a Torx screw. It defines the exact measurements and angles in a very detailed manner. And if I you know, build things around this specification, I can make sure that everything you know, is you know, perfect. And this is good then because manufacturers of screws, they can produce screws based on these exact standards. And also manufacturer, manufacturers of tools can build specific tooling based on these definitions. And finally, this makes me, as the chief repair officer at home, happy because I can rely on the screws and my tools to match and work together in concert. In concert. And so this is really where um, you know, this leads into open telemetry. Um, you know, in software development, this is where open telemetry comes into play. It is an open standard as part of the CNCF foundation. It got formed through a merger of open tracing focusing, as the name suggests, on traces, and open census, focusing on metrics. So it standardizes the collection of all telemetry, like traces, metrics, and logs, and in a very vendor agnostic way. Um, it also comes with controls the, to then manage that telemetry and, for example, you know, send it to an observability backend of your choice, for example, like Neuralic. So open telemetry provides a lot of benefits um, to many different personas and teams. Um, the key value proposition you know, are, of course, that it is an open standard and vendor neutral. We at Neuralic, we have you know, basically invented the, the area of APM, application performance monitoring, but, and we have our own agents. But you know, the truth is, um, I think open telemetry is the future. But 
In addition to that, there are other benefits such as you know instrumenting once, so less effort to implement today, but also you know less effort to implement in the future. And typically, customers also value the easier governance and transparent code where you can basically um, only need to learn one way to implement with open telemetry, the SDKs and APIs once, and then you know you reuse that uh, learning and that knowledge in other parts of your um, systems. So really, it adds a lot of benefit when it comes to implement observability practices and you know monitoring in, in general. So another key component of open telemetry is the so-called open telemetry collector. And think of it as a pipeline, which allows you to send telemetry from your applications and services written in various kinds of programming languages into the receiver. You can then also use various other environments and manage services like your Azure environment, for example, to forward telemetry also into the um, receiver. The processor um, defines ways on how you can then process that data. For example, to decorate, to encrypt, or to obfuscate or drop even you know, some data that you don't want to send forward to um, you know, in a, another system. And finally, you can then decide where to export this data to. Either you know, other open source solutions or you know, full observability platforms like, for example, Neuralic. And so both Dapper and .NET Aspire, they embrace observability as a first class citizen and provide a, an opinionated approach to capture such telemetry. And the current um, Dapper release 1.14 tracing is already based on open telemetry. Metrics currently still leverages open census, but this is about to change um, very soon. So in the next version of Dapper 1.15, which is currently planned to be released in 20, um, you know, December of 2024. Um, also, metrics will be based, will hopefully based on um, open telemetry, which is great. And then .NET Aspire is another project, basically by Microsoft. And if you haven't heard about this, I highly encourage you to have a look into this as well. It provides an opinionated cloud-ready stack for building observable, production-ready, um, distributed applications, and it integrates nicely with Dapper and provide some really nice capabilities for you know, a nice developer experience. The example that I'll show you in the demo in a second is actually based on Dapper and .NET Aspire. And one of the things that you know, we'll look into is also kind of like the developer dashboard that will show us um, additional information and you know, data already while I develop my applications you know, on, my, on my laptop, for example. So um, the example that I built or you know, that I want to show in this um, um, talk is actually based on a public.NET Aspire sample application. I have extended it a little bit in order to make it more interesting from an observability perspective. The, the first use case is a simple service invocation you know, from the web service to the API service um, to retrieve some you know, artificial weather forecast data. And the second one leverages a message broker. And in this case, it's a Kafka broker, in my instance, to show a publish and subscribe scenario. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, if you want to play around with it yourself, you can use the QR code um, at the top of, my, of the screen here that will link to my GitHub repository. And so you can you know, clone this repository. In this repo, I have created two different branches, um, one that purely leverages um, Dapper using the Dapper CLI, and another one that is focused on the .NET Aspire integration with Dapper. And this is what I will go through in the, um, in the demo in a second. And you know, like I said, I am using um, Neuralic as my observability backend of choice but the concept can be applied to any other observability vendor or any other, you know, other um, open source tooling around observability. But I, of course, you know, want to show the data and you know, the, the results of the instrumentation in a, you know, in a relic environment, because this is what I have available. 
All right. So without further ado, um, let's jump into a quick demo and have a look at to what this could look like when you run um, such an application. So let me switch over to my <clears throat> code base here. Like I said, the repository is based on the public repo, um, and the samples that are part of this repository, um, there's one example available that is called Aspire with Dapper. And if you um, are familiar with um, you know, .NET Aspire a little bit, you know, it adds a, two additional projects typically that you would have in a .NET environment to your projects. One is called the app host, and one is called the service default. So it has some you know, opinions about how you should deal regarding you know, resiliency, um, observability, and some um, things like that. And then the other two projects, the API service and the web component, these are the actual you know, sample demo applications that I'll be showing throughout this, um, this course. So the first starting point, if we look into uh, .NET Aspire, is um, typically the app host project. And if I open this up and jump into the um, program CS um, for this specific project, you will notice that this is kind of like the application host, which is the actual project that you will start and which will then you know, integrate all the different services that you have incorporated into your application. So you will notice that in the first section, I have some you know, definition for the open telemetry um, data. Basically, the only thing that I have to define here is my in the Relic license key. This is really just, we have an um, API endpoint, which is this one here. This is the open telemetry line protocol, OTLP endpoint for the data to send into Neuralic. And since this is an API, I need to provide an API key, which is typically the Neuralic license key. And then you can see, you know, I'm adding some additional components. .NET Aspire adds some additional um, um, capabilities for me to add this into the application host. The first thing is the um, PubSub environment, which is, again, my local um, Kafka cluster that I'm running. The second one is actually the one of the first projects, which is the API um, project. And so, so with this, I am able to actually configure the sidecar and provide some options for this to be um, you know, properly configured. In this case, what I only did is um, I'm using the OTLP endpoint and the OTLP headers to basically just configure the export of the telemetry that is part of the sidecar to be sent also into my um, observability backend. And then also for the service itself, I also did the same thing. And then I'm referencing the um, PubSub as part of this project. The same concept um, applies to the, the web application as well. You can see uh, it is very similar to um, what this looks like. I won't go into further detail on you know, this um, specific project. The, the, um, the way to spin up the application is quite straightforward. Um, what you would do is kind of like you would um, use a .NET run command. And let me make this a little bigger here. So I'm using a .NET run command um, in order to spin up the application. And in this case, I'm using .NET run, and I'm specifying the app host as my startup project, which will then trigger and initiate all the other um, subsequent actions. Once I have done that, and this is something that you know, .NET Aspire brings um, with it, is it will show up a developer dashboard. So let's have a look at how this looks like. So this is the developer dashboard that I have um, running here for my application. Let me make this a little bigger. So it actually you know, shows me all of the different resources that are part of my application. You can see I'm looking at the Dapper sidecars for the API and the web, and then the actual projects for API and the web interface as well. I can then you know, from here jump directly into the endpoints, you know, spin up my application, and then you know, um, um, interface with the application in, in this case. The UI for this basically looks like this. This is the sample project where I can access some weather forecast information. This is the first use case where my web application talks to an API and you know, retrieves some weather, artificial weather forecast information. And then the other aspect is the orders where I'm basically you know, just 
you know, submitting um, or publishing a message into my Kafka queue, which will then be subscribed to by the other service and, you know, processed. So how does that look like if we jump into an observability backend? Um, I could use the, um, the traces and look also at the traces directly in the developer dashboard. And this is one of the value propositions of .NET Aspire that I can look into um, this configuration directly here. But since I already um, configured the applications to send the data to my Norelic backend, if I jump into the uh, um, details here in the environment um, variables, I can see that for the hotel endpoint that we will see here, this is the hotel exporter OTLP endpoint. I have configured this to send the data to my Norelic um, API. So I can then look into the data. You know, this is the um, application. This is one of the applications, the API that we're looking at. And I'm looking at all the different traces that I'm capturing. And you can see um, for the first instance, if I look at the, the weather, oops, the. Could you zoom in a bit more, uh, Harry? Uh, because we yeah. have a bit of difficulty, I think, due to the bandwidth. So it's a bit blocky at times. Is so if you increase it, a bit, that will help us. Yes, thank you. OK. So what I can do now is I can search for any um, you know, weather um, traces. And in here, I can, oops, no, this is not what I wanted to do. A uh, little bit of lag equals get and then use the weather endpoint. And you can see if I click into one of these traces, I have multiple traces that I captured. If I look into one of these traces, I can then identify you know, what the execution looked like. You can see from the web API, from the web um, project, we jumped into the, um, the stepper sidecar, to the API sidecar, and then finally to the API um, that is actually um, executing that request. From a tracing perspective, I can also see that data in the, you know, in the um, you know, waterfall view. And you know, clicking into this, I can also access you know, specific information on the specific request. What I added on top of this is um, a thing called you know, some you know, custom data, some custom attributes that are also able to add into this. So you can see here, I'm adding you know, the amount of weather forecasts that we retrieved from the service. I can see the average temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit and so on. I'll show you in a second on how this can actually be configured in a second, but useful information to have if I want to identify any issues. And of course, also, um, if I am <clears throat> receiving some logs, I can also you know, access these logs directly from this trace. So now we're looking at a single trace and the um, correlated logs in, for this specific trace. So this is great. Um, but let's have a look into a, the more complicated use case, which is basically focusing on the, the pub sub scenario. So for this, I am you know, getting rid of this um, search bar. And then we already noticed some you know, order traces. And so for this, if I open up one of these traces, um, I can see, again, the scenario on how this actually looks like on a you know, service map view. I can also look into the data in more detail, you know, coming from the get uh, order request all the way down to the API. And then again, if I look at the um, API span um, for this specific trace, I can then also look at some of the attributes. And again, what I added in here is a couple um, you know, aspects that OpenTelemetry allows me to add, which is adding some custom data, some custom traces and metadata to these um, spans. One of them is the end user ID, and the other one is um, the order ID, which I also added as a custom um, piece of information. So now I can see this data from my application as part of the trace information that I also already captured. You may also notice that I um, have received some traces with um, errors, and in this case, uh, let's open up one of these um, traces. And then you can see that there's additional things happening. Um, and so in case of a failed request, so in case of one of the messages from Kafka that could not be processed, what I'm doing here in the sample application is I'm sending the data to a poison, to a you know, dead letter topic. 
So if I receive a request and I'm seeing some errors here, some exceptions, this is of course um, a um, synthetic <laughs> request or some synthetic exception, something bad happened. Um, what I'm doing there is I'm sending the message then to a, uh, a poison orders topic, which can then be um, a process with some you know, investigation and maybe some manual user interaction. So this is also um, possible. And so the question now is um, on why are these um, traces and, and this custom data so important? And the information is that basically, oops, I'm sorry. Um, the, why this, uh, this data is important is simply because um, it allows me to you know, make changes to my application and yes, I need to add some you know, dependencies to my code, you know, some you know, specific trace information. However, um, uh, since open telemetry is being used, you know, this is an open standard, it is vendor agnostic, you will um, not introduce any dependencies that, will, that you will probably regret in, the, in, regret in the future. And secondly, you know, it helps you to solve some of the key issues, um, you know, for example, in a typical environment where you may see a thousand errors um, that are occurring or a thousand, a thousand exceptions, how can you make sure that these a thousand you know, exceptions are, um, you know, belong to a single user or whether or not a thousand users have one issue? So this use case of you know, getting this information um, is so helpful if you do some root cause analysis on this um, type of data. So how does that look like? So let me jump back into my um, environment and let's have a look into the errors. And what we um, enable by default is kind of like you can look at all the errors that occurred. And in this case, it is only like a single exception. What will happen is that with the end user.id that you have seen as a custom attribute, and this is a an so-called attribute convention from open telemetry that you can use, the the result of this um, actually allows me then to see, you know, of all these, you know, almost 200 errors, I can see how many users were impacted with this, in this case, in the last three hours, and how does this change from a historical perspective? Do we see any changes? So, and this is so um, valuable information if you want to diagnose and do some root cause analysis for this application. If I then jump deeper into this, um, I can then also you know, look into some various error profiles or a few of these error profiles in my account. And for some reason, that link isn't working. Let me, oops, what is happening? Ah, okay. Okay, so let me um, quickly go back into the slides. I prepared these um, uh, slides as well. So basically, I can then look into the error profiles, um, which will allow me to see, you know, across all the traces that we have captured, and this specific user um, exception that we have seen, how does it distribute across all my end user IDs or across all my order IDs? So really helpful information for me to diagnose and, you know, get um, to the root cause of the issue faster by having all of these um, custom attributes and custom information, and. Open telemetry really allows to um, add this quite easily. If we look into one of the examples, um, and I jump into the API service here, for example, I can look into the um, the weather forecast. In here, this uses standard, in this case, .NET um, methodologies and SDKs to actually, you know, retrieve the current activity which is you know, equivalent to a, a span and a trace. And then I can add these weather forecasts or in the other um, use case for the orders, I can then also you know, add um, the end user.id, which again is a open telemetry attribute convention that you can use to send in, for example, the customer ID and the order ID. So this really helps me to um, add this easily without having any dependencies to any you know, libraries or any um, um, you know, packages that I need to incorporate into my application. Going back into the slides, um, 
there's some other information that you can add in, you know, looking at maybe some heat maps and so on um, due to um, lack of time for today. I'll wrap us up here and, you know, come to the summary. <clears throat> open telemetry is really here to stay. Um, it is an open um, standard that is based on, you know, um, open technologies. It is vendor agnostic. You know, looking into this is really um, a key um, source of information and both Dapper and .NET Aspire support this um, from the, as a first class citizen. I think, you know, the integration that I just showed you with the custom data that you can add really shows the power of an open standard because if we, um, you know, all reflect on an open standard, it makes it easier for, you know, all of the different things like, you know, inter-service communication, but also capturing data from your applications that you can decide to put into the, the trace data in information. It has brought industry support, um, various kinds of vendors, like for example, Microsoft and Azure and other services, they already you know, start building support of open telemetry into these applications. And it is really a new era for observability that both Dapper and also .NET Aspire um, bring to the table. And again, also, you know, huge community contributions um, for this. And, you know, we, I think we will see more and more of this in the future. And I'm excited about the, the future also of Dapper in this era um, and also the broader support with open telemetry in this, um, in this environment. And with that, I am pretty much hopefully on time. Um, Thanks for having me, and um, I'm looking into any questions that may um, come up. You are definitely on time, uh, Harry. No, no, no worries on time. That is uh, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, we had a bit, bit of a bandwidth issue now and then, so not okay. everything was visible. But I, I'm I'm pretty sure that you can share the code that um, uh, that you've been sharing us. Right? Do you have some kind of a, a link where people can get? Um, this yes. example, yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. I can share that. Right, yeah, perfect. If you can, yeah, share that with with, with me, then uh, I can even like drop it in the um, uh, in the chat very quickly. That'd be great. Sorry for the bandwidth issues. I'm not sure what the issue was. No worries. And and even like yeah, D David Fowler was even uh, here because uh, yeah, of course uh, you want to monitor everything uh, what happens with Aspire. Right? So <laughs> that was uh, that was nice to see uh, him him in the chat. So welcome, David. <laughs> Yeah, one person in the chat had mentioned, um, Harry, you possibly having a demo where you showed telemetry being sent to multiple places. Did, did you have a setup? Maybe not today, but like at some point, did you have like a demo that did something like that? I can definitely share a demo where you can, for example, you know, send the telemetry or different types of telemetry to different, um, you know, targets. Like, for example, the traces you can send maybe to some you know, environment like Sipkin as well, and the metrics to some other environment. But uh, I can definitely share some example um, implementation of this, yes. Yeah, that'd be great. And then if you send us the link, we can always share it with the folks. We can place it in our Discord um, for folks that are interested in seeing what that looks like. For sure. <laughs>